For a long time, I've had a cheap idea. Blah, blah, blah. Industry. Look, and well, I actually recorded this video like five months ago. At the time, I was still working for T-Corp. My phone that I was using had a not very good camera on it, and I was gonna do a narration after the fact. But now it's actually been long enough that I don't necessarily remember all of the steps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop in and I'm gonna try and narrate what I think I was doing back then, and no guarantees that I'm gonna get it right every time. We'll see what all happens, but it's gonna be present me telling you what I was doing and not past me telling you what I was doing. So let's see how this goes. What am I talking about here? Well, it worked okay. It wasn't what I wanted. I wanted something that used the space better and was a lot more useful and fit the look of the room. So I built my own coffee table, but today we're gonna to be taking a look at what it took to do this and the processes I went through. So after a quick shot of what the living room used to look like, now I'm just doing measuring and cutting to get one board that's the total size of the coffee table to make sure that the size I think I want is actually a size I want. So there it is on the floor. That is the size that I wanted. The camera I was using there was pretty fisheye, so it was a little hard to tell but now I'm moving on to cutting up strips that are gonna become the sides of the table. It's planned to have some drawers and like a lift at the top, so it's all good stuff. I'm using the track saw. I think I was using that for a little while and like it was pretty good, but it wasn't giving me as straight and clean of lines as I wanted, so I switched over to using a table saw, which has some good things and some bad things about it, of course. Uh, the table saw I was using there's like the guard that's supposed to prevent any wood from getting kicked back, which is great and a good safety feature if it's working right. The guard I had on there, something's weird about it. It's like slightly twisted or something in some of those original shots. So I was not getting really the, the use out of it that I was wanting to. It's supposed to be a safety feature that makes everything better and safer. And what I was getting out of it is it was getting in my way and definitely causing problems. So I think at some point in this video, it actually comes off, like I take it off because if it's working properly, it's safer. When it's working improperly, it is not safer. Okay, this here. These are supposed to be two little spiky things that are resting down on the wood. And as the wood passes underneath them, they prevent the wood from getting kicked back. But something about the ones I had were bent at a weird angle so that they were somehow stopping the wood from actually passing smoothly through the machine. It made it so that it always kicked off at an angle, which meant that the middle of the board was like pressing weirdly into the blade, and I was trying to make it kick back even more. If I happen to have a gap in the narration where I've got nothing to say, I'm just gonna pop in and answer some questions that my supporters on Patreon asked me. All right, so here I've just got the box set up. I put all the pieces out to make sure that I had all the pieces that I needed. There's, you know, they're, I, they're not attached to anything. I just wanted to make sure like, okay, am I missing anything? Because that's definitely happened. I cut everything, I think I've got it, and then I don't. So I just set it up. And now I'm just going through, I'm marking with a pencil because I'm gonna be putting this whole thing together with pocket holes. Like you get one of those jigs that like lets you put the screws in at a really precise angle. They're super nifty. And there's other ways to do joinery. I have very little experience with joinery and this is like the fastest and simplest way that I know. It's pretty repetitive. I'm just doing the same thing over and over. So I've got the video sped up a lot. Obviously you don't need to see all of this in real time. It would just be like an hour long video of like, well, he's drilling more holes and he's putting in more screws. If I happen to have a gap in the narration where I've got nothing to say, I'm just gonna pop in and answer some questions that my supporters on Patreon asked me. I did try to make sure that I was like sandwiching everything in a board so that I wasn't getting it to shift or anything too much, but it's fine. So after I had everything screwed together, I did put the four sides together. They still aren't screwed. That's why I'm gonna now mark it with a pencil because I'm gonna put all of it together again. Like I made the four sides individually. Now I have to attach the four sides to each other. Same thing, more pocket screws. It's hard to go wrong. First Patreon question, Harmony asks, why do flip-flops go flip-flop? Well, Harmony, I'm glad you asked. That's actually something that was intentionally bred into the sandals over hundreds of generations, but it's important to remember that they're actually only called flip-flops if they're from the flip-flop region of France. Otherwise, they're just called sparkling sandals. With all of the pocket holes drilled, now I line everything up and put it together again with the screws. 
Now what I'm working on building is the inside supports that all of the drawers are going to attach to. The drawer slides have to be attached to something. I had some of this extra board. It's what I used for the surfaces on the workbenches in my workshop, and so I had some left over. I thought, you're not ever gonna see what it is the drawers are attached to. I'm just gonna grab this, cut it to the right size, put it inside the box. Again, I set it up just to make sure that it's all the right size and spacing and everything, and then more pocket hole screws, because like I said, this whole thing is really held together by those. I even went through and drilled the pocket holes that I was going to need to attach it to the surface, the top part of the table, once that was attached. Obviously I didn't need those yet, but I wanted to do that in preparation so I didn't have to try and figure out how to drill them later. Now I'm measuring for where I want to put all of the sliders for the drawers. Here's the thing. I did like no research into this. I've never built cabinets before. I've never built drawers before. Like I might have seen a video at some point on how to do it, but I'm mostly making it up as I go. Did I do it right? I don't know, probably not. In the end it worked out, but man, I bet there are some things I could have done better here. This whole video is also a good exercise in why Nate needs a cameraman. Now that's been established before. All of the videos I did uh, last year in 2021 when I was still with t -Core, I was filming them myself, I was editing them myself, and I'm not the best at either of those things. But that's what you got. So this is like the last one that I filmed myself. And hopefully that doesn't happen in the future because I always set up a camera in what seems like it's going to be a good angle, and then it's not. Time to make some drawers. I'm using MDF for this. It's just so uniform, it cuts nicely, it glues together nicely, and because this is the inside of the drawer, it doesn't really matter if it looks good, it just has to be functional. So once again, I'm using some on the track saw, some on the table saw, just gotta get all the pieces to assemble the drawers. This is a good learning experience, just making boxes. I certainly learned some things that I would change next time. One of the things I learned is that the blade on my table saw doesn't why go to 90 degrees? It's like 89 and a half, which works for a lot of things, but when you're trying to make 90 degree corners line up to each other, you run into some issues. So I think I have to go in there and like disassemble it and clean it. I think there's sawdust in there like stopping it from tilting all the way back up to 90. All right, so while cutting my MDF board, I did something amazingly clever. Yeah, I put it on top of the box that I've been building. For the most part, that's okay, but you gotta make sure you don't overlap the box. I did, I overlapped the box, and then I cut it with the track saw, and I cut right into the sidewalls of my table that I was building. Real clever-like, excellent move. I just ignored it, I just left it. It's still there in the final version. You can't usually see it. It's just really dumb. Got all four of my drawers made. Again, I set everything up to make sure I had all the pieces I need. Then it's going on to gluing and clamping. So remember how I talked about how things didn't quite get cut 90 degrees? This is where that came into play. I would glue a piece on and then it would turn out that it was tilted just slightly because of how it cut. Now, I probably could have overcome this if I had been smart and glued these up on a square, something to make sure it stayed at 90 degrees. But I didn't do that. There we go, reaching down to the ground to pick up a push stick so I don't have to get my fingers too close to the saw. I should have just had one ready and been using it already. I'm not sure why the sequence is set up like this. Like I said, I put this together a while ago. This is just adding in the bottom of the portion that's going to lift up, because that's going to be its own compartment. So there's going to be the drawer section in one area, and there's going to be the lifting part that's just got a big cabinet underneath it. So I was attaching the bottom panel with that. Uh, I'm just using some small screws, pre-drilling, attaching it with extra wood glue to make sure. 
This piece, again, you don't really see it much. It's just on the inside. It's purely utilitarian, not visible unless you've got the top up. Again, probably things I should have done better with this, but it works. So why am I using the world's longest screwdriver bit? This is like the pocket hole bit. For some reason, I didn't switch to just a normal one. I was like, oh yeah, I'll just use that. I mean, I guess it drives the screws, so no harm, no foul. The legs had to be attached to something. I had those uh, like bent wire type legs and the there was no corners on the bottom. There was nothing to attach them to except the very edges of the wood and I didn't want to screw into the edges of the wood. So I added these little panels on and there's probably a much better way I could have put these on, like a much better design. But I just threw some glue on and then did pocket holes onto the sides and actually it worked great. Um, Maybe I should have done panels all the way across for extra strength, something else like that, but that's what I ended up with. I just did that on all four corners. Works pretty good. On to making the faces of the drawers. I've got these little pull, drawer pulls. I wanted everything recessed. I didn't want handles that stuck out. So I just drew the shape that I needed to cut out, used a drill to drill some holes, and then used a jigsaw to drill between those holes and then like sanded to clean it up because that was not a nice clean edge. But again, you don't ever see it. It gets hidden behind the, the panel. Uh, this is the kind of thing that like I should have been good with a router to do and it would have been like nice and clean or something like that. Uh, I didn't, I did this. Next Patreon question, Matt asked, hey Nate, will you make t-shirts for this channel anytime soon? I plan to, I need to get that organized. If any of you are interested in getting t-shirts, let me know. I still am working on making a logo for the channel or I could put on like a saying, something I've said in previous videos. If you guys have a preference, please tell me down in the comments. Okay, this clip is... I don't know why that clip was here. That was me taking the whole surface and cutting it where it's gonna be the divider so that part of it lifts up and the other part is just static and stays there. Now I'm just back to building drawers. Why was that clip here? Getting the drawers all lined up, the, the boxes fit onto the sliders, they all slide in. You get a great shot of the back of my head and neck. What am I doing? Now at first glance, it looks like these drawers are great. I was very happy with them. I thought, wow, I measured so accurately that the backs of these drawers get really close together. I measured wrong. They do get really close together. They get too close together. It looks good, but then when I put the front panels on, they actually stuck out. They were proud of the actual surface of the outside of the coffee table. I made the drawers a little bit too long and now I couldn't get the drawers to slide in all the way because I'm clever. I didn't show it in the video because when I mess up on something, I get mad and stop wanting to film anything. And then I, I do, I just stop filming and I just work on stuff until I can fix it. So what I didn't show on camera is that I then took every one of those drawers, raised my table saw blade up all the way, and I just cut part of the drawer off of the front of all four of them. I just like measured out, I was like, great, gotta take an inch off of each of these drawers, just ran it through on the table saw, cut off the front, made a new face piece, glued that onto the front of it, and had to do that with all four of my drawers. Measure twice, cut once. That's the theory at least. A couple of the drawers were just like one millimeter too wide for the drawer slides, so I just shaved off the sides of them here so that they fit without pushing the drawer slides out. Now I'm working on the, the lift mechanism. I have to get the two different lift pieces on the sides of the inside of the cabinet bit that will spring open the top when I'm trying to use that as a table surface. And I honestly didn't know what the best way to do this was. I think maybe the best way would have been to do it uh, before I added the bottom panel, but I didn't. The bottom panel was already attached at this point. So I took another piece, just a scrap piece, and I just, I screwed that into the to the lift piece and then I screwed that onto the side panel and 
I don't actually remember what I did to measure to make sure that both sides were like the same forward and backward. Maybe it's like touching up against it. I suppose you can just go check on the finished product. But yeah, that was, that was just to add the lift. Aha, here, this, this is the spot. You see, the guard is now removed. The actual like guard itself, that thing was like bent and crooked and I tried to straighten it out, but I couldn't, so I just took it off. Okay, and now I have some trim. Uh, you know how I was saying you should measure twice, cut once, or like measure four or five times and then cut once? I'm more of a just go <laughs> builder a lot of the time because I'm so impatient. I, I don't know where I went wrong in this, but somehow the whole under cabinet that I built, like everything that goes underneath the very top surface of the coffee table, it's too big by like a quarter of an inch, like literally just a quarter of an inch too large, like it's too long. And so I needed to add just like a quarter of an inch to the top of the table, like to the length of the top of the table. So I went and got some trim and I just, it's like quarter of an inch trim. So if you have one side, one on the front, one on the back, I get an extra half inch. It's actually just the tiniest bit longer, just how I want it. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, I had trim and I was like, I'll just put this around the whole border and it'll make it a little bit longer and it'll be great. And actually it made it look even better. So I'm glad that something motivated me to do that because the look is better. Ideally, of course, I should have measured correctly and just thought, hey, some trim would look nice and put the trim on. That's not what happened. After getting the trim cut to the right size, I mitered it so that I could put it around the four sides of the table and it'd all like match up nicely. It's just attached to using some wood glue and some little brad nails, like really small. Can, can't really even see them once they're attached. And it's a great way to attach this kind of trim. It just disappears and does a really good job holding it on. Very nice and sturdy forever. This video gave me an excuse to buy a brad nailer. Always love a good excuse to buy a new tool. Once I had the trim attached, I put the whole thing upside down so I could really make sure that I was lining up the main cabinet of the box with the lid. Again, I don't know if there's a better way to do this. You know, maybe if I had a raised platform that I could put it on so I could actually look underneath it. But because I was building this whole thing on my garage floor, there wasn't really space for me to line it up and look on the underside to see how my spacing was. So I just did it upside down so I could make some marks, trace out with a pencil to show exactly where it's gonna be lined up. That way when I permanently attached it, it was all in the right spot. Uh, once again, using pocket hole screws, and I think I had to go through and add a couple more. I had done it on the white parts of the shelf, but I hadn't done it on the sides. And I wanted this thing like anchored, and I wanted it flat. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't gonna like bow up a little bit in between the shelf supports. So I added some more of those, and then I'm just sanding everything down before I attach it. sand the whole body, every part of the exposed surface, because I want it to be nice and smooth. It's gonna help bring out the grain more. This is plywood, but the final surface has a nice grain to it. And it's just gonna make everything more pleasant if it's nice and sanded. So go over every surface. Couldn't begin to tell you what grit sandpaper I used. I don't remember, probably like 220, something like that. That's a good grit for wood surfaces, right? I then went ahead and prepared the wood to stain it. I wanted to stain it before I put it on for some reason. Why am I doing in this order? I don't know, apparently I did. But I first had like a conditioner, you put it in and it helps the stain spread more evenly. I've never used this before uh, and I haven't done like a side-by-side -side comparison, but I think I've seen him done and it really does help the stain spread so it doesn't get like splotchy bits that are like, oh, the wood absorbed a ton of color here and almost no color here. And then I go through and I paint the whole cabinet with both the conditioner and with the stain, and I thought it looked good. I really liked the look. Um, I went with this color because it matches the floating shelves I built in a previous video.
the stain in order to apply right it says you're supposed to put a bunch on and put a bunch off so this is, I, I should have done like a Mr. Miyagi does wood staining kind of thing I feel like there was at least the painting I don't remember any wood stain on excess off but same thing applies you know so just get a nice even coverage everywhere all over the edges make it look good Staining, staining, staining. Just lots of staining. After I got the stain everywhere, I did add some clear coat. It's supposed to be a fairly durable varnish type spray. And I don't show it in all of the clips, but I did you know, try and make sure I went back and forth at different angles, crossing my spray pattern to get a really nice even coverage. And I think it looked really good. It worked pretty well, it was easy. There's lots of different types of varnish, different coatings. This was just some spray varnish that I'm sure I went with because it was fast to apply and it dried quickly. And I was impatient, but I think I actually did let it dry overnight just to be sure that I wasn't going to be leaving fingerprints in it before I attach things. I don't have a video of me not touching it, so I'm not positive on that. Okay, hang on. In the last clip, there was no board on top. Now there's a board on top. And I thought I filmed this process, but I think this is something where it literally just wasn't there on my phone. Like I, I opened it up and was looking through the files and I was like, oh, I thought I filmed that. So getting that board lined up and attached was actually kind of tricky because if you do it while the lifts are up, then if you do it while the lifts are up, then you're not going to be quite sure that it's in the right spot. And if you do it while the lifts are down, then you can't access it because remember, I. I already put the bottom on this thing. I can't reach in from the inside while it's closed, which would probably be the better way to do it. And so I had to figure out a way to have it closed and then open it while still in the same spot without screwing it in place. So what I ended up doing was I, I closed the two lift pieces and I took hot glue and I just poured a nice thick bead of hot glue down onto each lift arm and then I positioned the lid on top of it. I like pressed it down into the place. I had gotten them in the right positions with my other like test board pieces, so I knew it was the right height. So hot glue, pressed the board down, holding it in exactly the right spot, and then I just let it cool. I, I left it for like 10 minutes to make sure that that hot glue had really solidified well, and then I gently lifted it up, and it was enough. It lifted the arms with it and didn't come loose at all. It was still attached. So then, leaving it hot glued, I then just screwed in while it was open to get it lined up. I'm sure you're supposed to attach these things without the bottom piece being on there, but I just didn't do it in that order. And so that's how I got around that is by using hot glue on them to stick it on temporarily, pull it up, and then screw it in from the bottom for a nice permanent hold. There, see? Screws. Nice permanent hold. Clip really needs to be sped up. Now all those pocket holes I drilled in there earlier to attach the lid, time to make use of those. I'm attaching the lid with all the screws going around. It's held down a lot. That thing is sturdy, it's on there, and I don't really have to worry about it ever moving because it's held on by like 20 screws or something like that. Way more than necessary. The recessed pull handles onto all of the drawers, they just have screws that go in from the side, so I'm just attaching those now and the ugly holes that I made with the drill and the jigsaw. I've got the front faces of the drawers made with the handles on them, now I have to get them aligned with the front of the drawers. Now, 
Again, this is one of those things like, there's probably a better way to do this than what I did. I have seen the playing cards trick, so I'm copying that. Uh, it helps you get just the right spacing, like up and down, but I missed the part what they do next. Like, I'm not sure how they then attach it. Like, they get it lined up, so I got it lined up with the playing cards, and then I just went on the inside and drew some lines to mark where it's supposed to go. And I just used some glue, clamped it in place using those lines, and then a couple of brad nails in from the back side to hold it on. Shout out to Brian Brushwood from The Modern Rogue. The playing cards I'm using are actually some from him. He gave me a pack of them the first time I ever met him. It was at a convention in Utah, I think called CVX Live. I was there with Grant and I was quite new at this point. No one had any idea who I was, but I was talking to him and he was like, oh, you're working King of Random, that's cool. And he, he gave me a deck of cards and it turns out it's the only deck of cards I could find. And uh, that's the cards I used for this. Modern Rug, awesome channel, go check it out. Another Patreon question, Sean and the Corgis asked, what is one tool or equipment you most want in your shop and why? That one's actually a toss up between a benchtop wood planer or a CNC metal mill. Both of those tools are super useful and very cool and I would love them a lot. Look, it worked. It was probably not the right way to do it, but it works. The drawer pushes in and it's it's lined up. It's in the middle. It's like like I almost like I knew what I was doing. All right, I've got these these bent wire legs. Uh, I think they're called hairpin legs. My original plan was I was going to attach three of them, and one of the four corner pieces seemed like it was like more recessed than the other. So I was going to do three because that's going to be stable, and then I was going to try and figure out, okay, do I need like a biscuit, some sort of spacer to get in between the leg and the fourth corner and then I set up all three legs and I put that corner in wondering how much gap there's gonna be and it was none so whatever error I did all my errors balanced out like they worked out because all four legs just attached to those four corners perfect balance worked just how I wanted to holds the table nice and steady there's even weight as far as I can tell on all four corners and everything works. The drawers, all four drawers work. The lift works. It easily holds the weight of like food and drink and anything else I need. So there you go. Now before, here's what my room looks like. And after with the much, much better coffee table. Look how good that looks. Look at it. It's so much better. Oh, I love it. This actually turned out really well. I'm very happy with it and I learned a ton. Building something like this in the future, okay, I messed up several times with the measure twice cut once thing. Yeah, I had several of those issues where I was off on my measurements, so I really needed to learn to take that to heart. And two, I need to use a square more. Like I had a speed square and I would measure stuff square, but I need like a square that I can clamp things to so that as I'm attaching them, they're actually square. A lot of this coffee table ended up just a little bit out of square. You don't notice it, looking at it, it looks great. And even if you took a square up to it, you'd be like, oh yeah, you're only off by like a little bit. But like that little bit, it only takes a couple of those little bits to be off by too much. Overall though, I love how it turned out. Very fun. And I, I really would like to do another project like this in the future. <laughs> All right, that's it for this build and my, uh, many months later in iteration. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, let me know. I can't even say that I'm planning to do more videos like this because I don't like have a giant backlog of old videos that I filmed with my cell phone camera and I'm now just putting online. I just kind of had this one, but if you liked it, let me know. I'd appreciate it. And of course, a very special shout out. Thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. It means the world to me. I hope I was able to answer a few of your questions. Any that I didn't answer here, I'll go ahead and answer on the Patreon itself. Uh, but this was a lot of fun. And uh, if you're interested in becoming a supporter of my Patreon, the link for that is down in the description. Thanks for watching.